Oh, hey everyone, this video is about the HP 46 calculator which was on the market from 1973 to 1976. And the 46 was a desktop printing version of HP's second pocket calculator, uh, the 45 uh, here on the left. And as large as the 46 is compared to the 45, it was a lot smaller than HP's previous high-end programmable desktop series uh, like this 9810A. <coughs> or indeed HP's first calculator, the 9100A. And these large desktop calculators seem like a real curiosity uh, these days, but in the 60s and 70s, many manufacturers created large electronic desktop calculators, starting with the Anita Mark 8 in 1961. And the price of the 46 at the time was around 700 US dollars, which equates to roughly $4,500 now and for comparison uh, the 45 here only cost $400, uh, 300 less. And with that trend of miniaturization of electronics with uh, pocket calculators being cheaper and more uh, uh, portable, you can understand why in the mid-70s the demand for desktop calculators waned. But the Model 46 is interesting for many reasons. It was really built like a tank and it's quite beautiful from an industrial design point of view. It was also a stepping stone to HP's later desktop calculators and printing handhelds. And it's a fairly rare model uh, that you don't come across very often. And the 46 comes in uh, this rigid plastic suitcase with a massive uh, Hewlett Packard calculator label on the outside. And opening it up, we can see that uh, it fits snugly into this uh, molded space uh, with also space from the manual and power cord. And there are also even spare fuses in case you might need them. And the 46 weighs almost 6 kilograms, and partly because uh, it has a solid metal uh, skeleton inside the case. Uh, but there's also a heavy printer sub-assembly, and the 46 was one of the first products of any type to use uh, structural foam, which forms its outer shell. And structural foam has an internal cellular structure, and it's much stronger and lighter than uh, typical plastic injection molding. And overall, the 46 uh, it feels incredibly solid. The 46 has a seven segment uh, red LED display, uh, which is actually a, an added option um, and cost $100 more. Uh, so it was actually designed to be used just with its printer, uh, like many traditional adding machines. And the display can show 10 digits with a uh, two digit <coughs> exponent. And uh, the, it's made up of two elements, uh, each five digits per package with a built-in magnifying bubbles over each element. And the keyboard looks and feels like an IBM Selectric typewriter. Uh, the keys feel amazingly satisfying uh, to press. And uh, the keyboard has some interesting design elements. So obviously it's got more of a horizontal layout than a typical pocket calculator. And potentially you can use it with two hands. On the left is a section for arithmetic and stats functions. Uh, and another for stack operations. And on the right there's a numeric keypad with the basic arithmetic operations uh, to its right. And uh, the keyboard has uh, two large enter and print keys. And there's also large keys for zero uh, and plus as well. And uh, there's also a top row of control keys along uh, the top of the keyboard uh, with some printer control um, and also a red uh, shift key. And we can uh, flip this panel up to see the printer compartment. Uh, so it uses standard adding machine paper and you can see that it uses a dual red black ribbon. Uh, the red ink is for printing negative numbers and on the bottom uh, face of the panel uh, is a some operating notes. And uh, there's a small compartment here uh, possibly for storing printouts. And on the back we can see uh, the serial number panel and uh, there's also a voltage uh, selection unit uh, where you can select the voltage uh, being used um, with a fuse. And so of course the 46 is an RPN calculator with a 4 register stack. So to calculate 2 plus 3 times 4 uh, we can enter those numbers onto the stack 
and then hit uh, multiply and then plus. Uh, or if you want to save a keystroke, uh, you could swap things around and type uh, 4, 3, enter, 4 times 2 plus. And on the 46, uh, both the printer and the keyboard are buffered, uh, so you can type ahead and no key presses will be lost. And uh, if we turn the printer on, now you can hear it will um, start whirring up, and uh, each operation will get printed out. Um, and this printer on this 46 has a few issues, it's not uh, advancing properly. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, paper advance button. Uh, in between the operations, so uh, let's go to enter and then three and so you can see from this tape that both uh, the X register and the uh, operation are both uh, printed so it's really an audit log of your activity and like I was saying uh, negative numbers are uh, printed in red ink so uh, let's enter say negative 50 and then we can hit uh, the print button uh, to, uh, to actually print out the X register. Uh, by the way, the way, you'll notice that the printer is quite loud. I'm not sure if it's actually supposed to sound exactly like this. Uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, the printer also can print out error notes. So say if we uh, do a divide by zero, uh, note one uh, gets printed out, uh, which indicates um, that error. Uh, and when the printer is on, uh, the LED display has to wait for the result to be printed. So uh, turning the printer off uh, speeds things up considerably. And otherwise the 46 has the same functionality as the 45 which I have a separate video on so I won't go through it again in detail but in short you obviously have all your standard scientific operations so uh, let's do the sign of 46 degrees and uh, trig operations can work in degrees radians or gradients there's also coordinate conversion so we can enter uh, some x and y values onto the stack let's say 3, 4 and then hit the uh, to polar conversion uh, so the magnitude of the vector is 5 uh, and the angle is 36.8 degrees uh, and you can store and retrieve values from 9 memory registers so uh, we can enter uh, store 1 to uh, store that number into uh, register 1 and then hit uh, recall 1 to retrieve it and uh, there's also statistical operations so uh, let's start by clearing the registers and we can enter a series of numbers with the sigma plus key so let's say 45, uh, 55 and 75 uh, and now if we turn the printer on uh, we can actually hit the statistics button and uh, the 46 will print out uh, the number of entries, so 3, uh, the standard deviation, and the mean. And uh, numbers in uh, the series aren't stored individually, but you can also um, access uh, the number of entries at uh, location 5, uh, the sum of the entries at location 7, uh, and the sum of the squares at location 6. And so in summary the 46 was an advanced scientific desktop calculator uh, at an inflection period where pocket calculators started to capture the market. It wasn't programmable so it wasn't as advanced as some of HP's larger desktop offerings but it was more compact and very well designed. And the 46 had a sister device, the 81, which was a desktop version of the HP 80, uh, the advanced business calculator. And after the 46, HP went in a few directions with its printing calculators. Uh, there was the HP 97, uh, which was released three years later in 1976. And this was not only uh, more compact than the 46, but also programmable. Uh, it had a thermal printer, a card reader, and was battery powered. 
And uh, the 97 was really quite a special device uh, that was surprisingly only discontinued in 1984. Uh, but really by the end of the 70s, pocket calculators had really taken over. Uh, some like this 19C even had their own printer. And desktop calculators that are in working order tend to be quite expensive to buy now and obviously not easy to ship around. Uh, but if I can find one, I'll try to make a video on the 97 at some point. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.